welcome to medsci hub your to go channel where we deal with everything grade 11 and grade 12 maths and science as you you would have seen in our introduction i think you can guess what we are dealing with which is momentum and impulse so firstly i'm going to go through a few definitions which are very important when you deal with uh, momentum and impulse if you look at the screen the first definition that we are going to deal with is we defined momentum which says it's a vector quantity which is defined as the product of an object's velocity and mass now what is important in this definition is firstly they say it's a what it's a vector quantity now when when they say when you deal with vector quantities what what should come to mind that whatever you do or whatever you get should have what a direction right should have what a direction so in your final answer it's very important to include the direction of the momentum or the momenta of whatever objects that you would be dealing with so that's one thing that is important that it is what it is a vector quantity it is a vector quantity like i said what is important is it it has what it has direction so in your final answer always include direction like for in, for instance they would say the momentum is moving eastward or it's moving or it's moving westward what what i would normally do is actually it's sort of like my default kind of uh, calculation whenever objects or momenta is being carried westward that would that would normally be my positive direction and then eastward would normally be my negative direction so but then depending on how you solve it always include direction when you're dealing with momentum the second uh, definition that we are going to deal with is we define a system what is a system now it says a system is a physical it's a physical config, configuration configuration of particles and or object that we study right now you will be dealing with something that is you can say it is put under certain conditions so that's how we are going to deal with everything particles or bodies that are being dealt with in a certain in a with certain conditions attached to it with certain uh what you call uh, yeah certain systems certain certain uh, uh conditions and we will deal with those conditions as we go along now there is a definition also for an isolated system we deal with a system but then we also deal with systems that are isolated like i said they have conditions and one of those conditions is a system has to be isolated now a definition of an isolated system it says it is a physical configura configuration of particles and or objects now when we deal with momentum remember it doesn't always mean you're dealing with macro objects like big objects it can also mean explosions and things like that even small things hence hence it says here it can be particles or objects now okay let me just reread the definition for an isolated system it says it's a physical configuration of particles and or objects that we study that doesn't exchange any matter with its with its surroundings and it's not subject to any force whose source is external to the system now explaining they says whose force is what external to the system now meaning we are only going to, to deal with 
internal forces meaning if you have maybe two objects that are that are in an isolated system the only the only forces that we are going to deal with or the only the only forces that, that we are going to deal with is internal forces meaning they have to exert force on each other object one has to exert some sort of force on object two and then object two has to, has to exert some force on object one so we are only going to deal with those internal forces by external forces basically means you get a questions a question where it says where you have to ignore friction right now when you ignore friction it means friction acts as an external force so we ignore friction and we deal with only internal forces which are forces where two objects exact on each other we ignore things like friction so friction will act as an external force and you see in the questions it will normally say force is uh, 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 friction is negligible or ignore friction meaning friction doesn't have any 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 influence in this isolated system right i hope that you guys understand what we mean by an isolated system now to another important uh, definition which is conservation of linear momentum it says the total momentum of an isolated system remains constant meaning it is conserved now in terms of an equation that describes uh, conservation of linear momentum it says the final momentum equals your what equals your initial momentum right remember we said momentum is what it's a product of objects velocity and mass now coming to the conservation of linear momentum if you have two objects you will have sum of momentums will sum of initial momentums momenta will equal sum of initial momenta right the sum of final momenta will equal the in sum of initial momenta now moving on to other definitions now here we defined elastic col collision elastic collision which says it is one which total momentum or total kinetic energy of the system after a collision is equal to the total kinetic energy before the collision now when you deal with collisions for instance when you deal with two cars which are colliding what normally happens is you will get where these two cars where well, after after colliding they stick to each other or after colliding there's there's some sort of ricochet in a way right now i would explain elastic collision as a maybe a ricochet of that sort of uh, uh, collision now it says a total total kinetic energy or momenta of the system after collision is equal to the total kinetic energy before the system and this is how we define it and we know kinetic energy as what as half mass times mv squared right now when we look at inelastic collision if we go back to our slide and we look at inelastic collision it says it is one which the total kinetic energy of the system is not the same before and after the collision now we will we will prove this or we will look at this when we deal with some of the problems right but for for an example like i said if you have two cars and they are in a collision 
and if they stick together after the collision we would define that as what as an inelastic collision right because now momentum the kinetic energy would not equal to the, the kinetic energy before will not be equal to the kinetic energy after but we know in our definition of of energy right momentum energy is neither lost nor created right but then in a case of inelastic momentum right that energy it is converted into what it in, it in, to either the heat when the two objects collide or even the sound of that collision so it is not lost but then it is converted into other forms of energy right now let's look at our second uh, definition which is also important which is newton's second law of motion which says the net and we define this in terms of what it's the definition of newton's second law in terms of momentum right it says the net or resultant force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change of what of momentum right and then another one which is very important is impulse momentum theorem which says when a net force acts on an object the impulse of its force is equal to the change in momentum of the object now the impulse momentum theorem is defined as the net force the net force which is equals to the change in momentum it says when a net force acts on an object the impulse and this is our what this is our impulse this is an impulse doesn't doesn't normal it doesn't have a what you call a letter that is assigned to it in a way but then the, it is written as what as the sum of forces delta t now this is what this is what this is our impulse right now the definition says when a net force acts on an object the impulse of this force is, is equal to the change in momentum of the objects and we know the change of momentum would be defined by the final momentum minus what minus the initial momentum right now these these are very important definitions that you guys need to understand and learn in grade 12 remember in grade 10 you dealt with motions but not how those motions actually affect any of any of the object in grade 11 you dealt with forces and how those forces actually alter or change the motion of the object now this is an introduction of having two objects which are in an in a what you call uh, an altercation right and how that altercation changes their momentum right so this is a new topic for grade 12 that we are going to deal with now i, I will straight move on to to two to two examples that we are going to deal with hopefully they will actually show you guys what we mean by two objects which exact or exact force on each other and how their motions will actually change and what is meant by an isolated system and how we deal with those now let's look at this question it says a 2 kg block is at rest in a smooth frictionless horizon horizontal table 
the length of the block is x and a bullet of mass 0 0.015 kg traveling east traveling east at uh, 400 meters per second strikes the block and passes through passes straight through at a constant acceleration refer to the diagram below ignore any loss of mass of the bullet and the block now what is key there like i said when we deal with isolated system it will the question will will state frictionless and in this question it clearly says it is a smooth frictionless uh, uh, surface meaning meaning we deal with an isolated system right now looking at the question the question says calculate the momentum calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the bullet immediately after it emerges from the block now what we need to do there is write all the variables that we are given i'm going to start with the with the mass of of the block and i'm going to denote it with capital b right they say the mass of the block is 2 kg and then the initial velocity of our block it says here it is at rest meaning it's zero meters per second and then let me just write it it is the initial velocity of the block of the block and then let's look at the mass of the bullet which will which i will denote with a small b the mass of, of the bullet is zero comma zero one five kg kg and then the initial velocity the initial velocity of our bullet it is given as four so they say it's traveling what it is traveling east what in an easterly direction so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna choose my east direction as what as a positive direction right so it's very important remember velocity is, is a what it's a, it's a it's a vector quantity as well so direction is very important when you're dealing with velocity as well right so like i said this will be my east direction will be the positive 400 meters per second and then remember the question they are asking us to calculate the magnitude of the velocity the magnitude of the velocity of the bullet immediately after it emerges from the block right now when we look at our equation it would be the sum of initial momentum equals sum of final momentum right now we would get let me write this down on a on a on a new page like i said the sum of final momentum initial momentum equals sum of the final momentum which is the mass of the bullet of the block in the let me start with the mass of the bullet 
in the initial velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the block and the initial velocity of the block e equals the mass of the bullet times the final velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the block times the final velocity of the block right now the mass of the block it is the mass of the bullet which is 0, 0,015 times the velocity of the bullet the initial velocity of the bullet and it was traveling at 400 meters per second plus the mass of the block which is 2 kg 2 kg and its initial velocity remember it was at rest meaning it is zero equals the mass of the bullet which is 0 0.0015 times the final velocity of the bullet which is what we've been asked we've been asked to calculate just after it leaves what it leaves the block meaning we are asked to calculate the final velocity of the bullet right so that will be our unknown variable there plus the mass of the block which is 2 times its final velocity if you look at the if you look at our sketch we are given the final velocity of the block there which is 0, 0,7 which is 0, 0,7 so it's going to be 0, 0,015 times 400 0, 0,015 times 400 you will get a 6 which is 6 times 2 times 0 which is 0 so I'm going to move on to the other side and say 2 times 0, 0,7 remember we still have 0, 0,015 times the final velocity of the bullet plus two times two times zero comma seven two times zero comma seven uh, you will get one so sorry here we have a plus remember you will get one comma four one comma four if we take the one comma four on the other side and say it's going to be 6 minus 1,4 which is 4,6 so we are going to have 4,6 divide by and then I'm going to immediately divide by 0, 0,015 equals the final velocity of the block so it's going to be 4.6 divided by 0, 0, 0,05 0, 0, 0,015 which is now we have the final velocity of our bullet will equal 
306,67 meters per second. Now remember, we they asked they asked us to find the what the velocity. Now remember, I said velocity is a what it's a vector quantity, right? Meaning we have to write down the direction or specify in which direction. And I chose the eastward, moving east. I chose it as a positive. I chose I made it positive, or you can say. 306,67 east after writing your answer clearly define the direction of the velocity so in this case it will be east it will be east now let's move on to our next question Let's move on to our next question. Now it says, if the bullet takes 0 0.002 seconds to travel through the block, calculate the length x of the block, right? And if, let's go back to our sketch. Let's go back to our sketch and see what they want us to calculate, right? Now it gets in and then it says it stays inside the block for 0, 0.002 seconds, right? Now if they, they want the length, right? They want the distance. They want the distance that the bullet travels inside the block, inside the block. Now there's different ways of trying to solve this, right? You can use uh, the impulse you can use the the the, the impulse uh, 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 momentum theorem but in this case yeah you can use the impulse momentum theorem because you are also given the time in which the bullet travels inside the block but in an easier way of solving this remember when you were dealing with uh, 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 equations of motion so I will use one of the equations of motions to solve this, which is much easier to do it, right? And the one that I'm going to use is the change in x equals the initial velocity plus the final velocity over 2 all equals change in time right now the initial velocity of our block the initial velocity of our block the initial velocity of our block remember it was 400 meters per second and then immediately after it left the block we had 306,67 and then remember it's all over 2 and then they say here the time is 0, 0,002 let me just write proper zeros there it's 0, 0,002 seconds now if you take your calculator and say 400 minus 400 minus oh, sorry. it's plus actually 400 plus 306,67 it's 400 plus 306,67 divide by 2 times 0, 0,02 seconds your answer would be 0 your answer would be 
one comma one one meters. All right, let's look at this question. The truck it has that it's a, it has a mass of four point five kg, traveling at twenty meters per second. It hits that car from behind, and then uh, the car's uh, mass is one thousand kg, and it was traveling at fifteen meters per second. Now the one does number A says you must calculate the final velocity of the truck car combination after the collision, right? Now here let's look at the direction. Let's look at the direction. Since we are not giving the direction of both the truck and the car, I'm going to assume they were moving in an east in an east direction. And I will write that as my positive direction because here it is it doesn't it doesn't say in which direct direction the car or the truck is moving. So we would assume that the car and the truck are moving in the same direction, right? And I would say that direction is an east or what direction, right? And if you can see the the car, the truck has was traveling at twenty meters per second. And then the car was traveling at 15 meters per second. And then obviously if it hits it from the behind, it means they were traveling in the same direction. So that one is clear. So both of them would be moving in an easterly direction. So that is clear. And they want us to calculate what the velocity of the truck car combination after the collision, right? Firstly, let me write what is known from this question. So what is known from this question is the mass of the truck, which I will write with a capital T, and then its mass is what is 4,500 kg, and then its initial velocity its initial velocity is 20 meters per second and then we have the mass of the car which is a thousand kgs which is a thousand kgs and then its initial velocity its initial velocity would be 15 meters per second right now in this case what you should ask yourself is is the momentum conserved i don't think the mo the momentum of these two of the truck and the car is conserved because the question clearly says after they collide what do they do they move together right they stuck together they stuck to each other and they moved together right so we can calculate we can calculate the their their what you call they are they are the kinetic energies uh, uh, separately but now we are calculating the momentum right we are dealing with a and then remember we, if we let me start with the the truck first which is the mass of the truck and times the initial velocity of the truck plus the mass of the car the mass of the car times the initial velocity of the car equals now what is key is what is key is after they collided they they moved together right meaning they were stuck together so meaning now 
their velocity they say what what they share then after the after getting stuck is they share the same velocity they, you're gonna share the same speed right so i'm gonna say the initial the final velocity i'm gonna say even their masses will be shared right their masses will be shared so it will be the mass of the truck plus the mass of the car and what we are looking for is their final velocity which is the truck and the car combination right so the mass of the car is 4500 times its initial velocity its initial velocity which is 20 meters per second plus the mass of the car which is a thousand kgs which is a thousand kgs times its initial velocity which is 15 meters per second equals now they got stuck to each other meaning they will have they will have the same it will be the sum of their masses the sum of their masses let me just rewrite this it will be 4500 plus a thousand and the final velocity of truck car combination now if we punch this in the calculator we will get 4500 times 20 which is 90,000 90,000 plus 1,000 times 15 which is 15,000 which is 15,000 equals 4.5 times a thousand which is 5.5 times uh, the final velocity of truck car combination right so i'm gonna add the 15,000 to the 90,000 15,000 to the 19,000 which is one of five thousand one of five thousand and then divided by five point five and then it will give us the final velocity of truck car combination so it's going to be one of five thousand divide by 5.5 which is now 19.1 so the final velocity of truck car combination is 19.1 meters per second which direction in an easterly direction in an easterly direction in an easterly direction i hope that makes sense to you guys so we're gonna quickly move on to the second question we're gonna quickly move on to the second question which says determine the kinetic energy of the system before and after the collision right now remember kinetic energy equals half mv 
squared. That's our kinetic energy. But now they want us to calculate it before and after the collision, right? So we're going to calculate them separately. We're going to calculate the kinetic energy of the truck and then we're going to calculate the kinetic energy of both the truck and the, the car, right? So let's quickly do that. But then the kinetic energy of both of them before the collision, right? So I'm going to continue from over here before the collision, right? The initial kinetic energy, right? Which I'm going to add it to the one of the one of the car, right? So this one would be the truck. This one would be the the car, right? Now we're gonna treat them individual, like one. They yeah, are individual in a way. So let let me start with the truck. Let me start with the truck. The two, the kinetic energy of the truck, right? And then we know its mass is. 4500 it's 4500 times its initial uh, velocity times its initial velocity which is 20 remember the squared remember it is squared right and then the kinetic energy of the car, the initial kinetic energy of the car would be a half times 1000 and then its velocity was 15 meters per second. Remember it is all squared. So let's get the kinetic energy of, of the truck which is 20 squared. times 4,500 uh, times a half which is 900,000 900,000 remember now we are calculating what kinetic energy which means the the measure of kinetic energy is we measure it in joules, so it will be 900,000 joules. So let's calculate the one for for the car, which is 15 squared times a thousand times a half, which is 1,000. 112,500 remember again we're dealing with kinetic energy which is joules and then you can add both of them which is plus the 900,000 let me just check your yeah, 900,000 which will give me Now, what we just calculated, remember, it is the momentum, the kinetic energy before the collision, right? It is before the collision. This is before the collision. This is before. This is before. Now, we need to calculate after the collision after the collision after the collision now remember after the collision they got stuck to each other so they moved together right with the same velocity and their masses were combined right now we can say ke 
this is all right let me just rewrite it down kinetic energy after the collision remember it was now truck car combination right so which is half times both masses which is 4500 let me just write it down which is 4500 let me just rewrite this let me start here which is a half times 4500 plus a thousand plus a thousand and then remember again they are they also shared the same velocity which we calculated let me just check what we got we got 19.1 meters per second right we got 19.1 meters per second so it's 19.1 meters per second remember we squared so let's jump into our calculator so 4.5 plus a thousand which is 5.5 and then 19.1 squared which is 3640 3600 3064 point 8 sorry point 8 times the mass which is 5.5 and then you times it by a half so let me somehow do it and say 364.81 times 5500 and then whatever you get remember again you so let me just write it down so whatever you get you times it by what you times it by a half times a half which is a million One million three hundred and twenty two thousand point five joules, right? Point five joules. That is the kinetic energy before and after the collision, right? So let's move back to our slide and see what the need for question b of that question one question c actually of that question one now they say they say to you explain the difference in your answers right meaning what they need explain the difference if you can look at the kinetic energy before the collision it is if you look at our answer the kinetic energy before the collision is a million twelve hundred thousand five hundred joules right this is before the collision right and then if we look at after the collision we got a million three thousand two hundred and twenty seven point five right can you see the kinetic energy before the collision it's a bit more it's a bit more than after the collision after the collision so after the collision it was a million three thousand two hundred and twenty seven which is a bit less right now they say explain why the difference in kinetic energy why are they not the same right now if you explain this remember the key in answering this is actually in the question 
right? So if we move back to our slide and read the question, right? Read the question. The truck, it has a mass of 4,500 kg and then it had a velocity of 20 meters per second. And then the car, 1,000 kg, which was traveling at 50 meters per second, and they were traveling in the same direction because the truck actually hit the car at the back. Now the first question they asked us to calculate the velocity of truck car combination after the collision, right? Meaning now after the collision they combined together, right? They combined together. Meaning in terms of kinetic energy, it was not an elastic collision, right? They collided together and then they got stuck together, right? Meaning some of the kinetic energy it got transferred. It, it, it like it did not actually get lost in a way. It got transferred. It got transferred tra transferred in in what way, right? Now after after a collision, there's some kind of some kind of distortion in terms of the shape of 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 the of the two objects. Like in this case, it's a car and a, and a, and a truck. Meaning their shape the, their shape will change, right? After colliding, their shape get distorted and then they get in a way destroyed in a way right so the difference in that kinetic energy means whatever we started with compared to whatever we we ended up up with after the collision right that loss in kinetic energy got transferred in terms of heat and after they collided that distortion in their shape that's when that kinetic energy got transferred in that form right now it's very clear that the difference in the kinetic energy before and after after the collision it's a bit less and it is it was not lost it was transferred in the distortion of both the car and the truck after the they've collided right so that's basically your answer so let's move on to number d was this an example if you look at our slide, it says, was this an example of an elastic or inelastic collision? Give a reason for your answer, right? This was an example of an inelastic collision, right? Why was it an inelastic collision in terms of your answer? It basically means after the collision, what happened? Both the car and the truck, they started moving together they got stuck to each other and they started moving together so that's why it was an inelastic collision and moment what you call the kinetic energy of the system it was not what it was not conserved so that that will be the final answer for 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 d you would put it in this way it is an inelastic col collision because the kinetic energy of the momentum was not conserved and how was it not conserved because after the collision they got stuck to each other so that would be your final answer thank you guys for tuning in to my sci hub in this section of momentum and impulse hopefully we managed to help you guys and see you next time thank you very much <laughs>